This video was brought to you by Brilliant. On Monday, Labour published its Commission on the UK's Future, written by former Prime Minister Gordon Brown. And this report contains some pretty radical ideas, including banning most second jobs for MPs, eliminating foreign money from UK politics, and perhaps most notably, replacing the House of Lords with a smaller elected second chamber. While Labour originally insisted that the recommendations in the report wouldn't necessarily be included in their next manifesto, and that all recommendations will be subject to what Labour has described as consultations, on Monday, Keir Starmer told the BBC that he had agreed to the idea of scrapping the House of Lords, and would aim to get it done within his first term in government. So in this video, we thought we'd take a look at what the report has to say about House of Lords reform, the politics of the report itself, and whether it's actually a good idea. Let's start by taking a look at what this report has to say about the House of Lords. The report makes three distinct criticisms of the Lords. Firstly, it criticised the Lords for maintaining, quote, the last vestiges of the medieval estates of the realm in the 92 hereditary peers whose titles passed down to their progeny. Secondly, it notes that the Lords isn't geographically representative, with the majority of members based in London and the South East. Thirdly, and perhaps most significantly, the report notes that with something like 800 current members, the Lords has become unacceptably large, and is now the second largest parliamentary chamber in the world, after only the National People's Congress in China. The report blames this expansion on crony appointments by successive Conservative Prime Ministers, noting that large donors to the Conservative Party are often rewarded with a peerage, even as was the case with the Conservatives' former Treasurer. That appointment goes against the advice of the Independent Appointments Commission. Now, we should say that this isn't a uniquely Conservative phenomenon. Tony Blair was pretty liberal with his appointments too, especially towards the end of his tenure, and he actually got in trouble for trying to appoint party donors in what became known as the Cash for Honours scandal back in 2006. Nonetheless, it's true to say that Lord's appointments have become politicised to the point of obscenity in recent years. Fifteen of the last sixteen Conservative Party treasurers have been offered a seat in the House of Lords, and a former Conservative Party chairman was caught telling undercover reporter that, quote, once you pay your three million, you get your peerage. Anyway, having articulated these three criticisms, the report goes on to suggest that the House of Lords should be replaced with a new assembly of nations and regions, which would be significantly smaller than the Lords, and more importantly, elected but via a different electoral system to that of the House of Commons. Now, the report doesn't provide much more detail than that, leaving the precise outlines of this assembly contingent on further consultations. Now, it's worth noting that this isn't actually a new idea. Abolishing the Lords was in Labour's 1910 manifesto, over a century ago, and Tony Blair originally wanted to replace the Lords with a wholly elected chamber before settling for more limited reforms in 1999. Now, before we get to whether or not this is a good idea, it's worth taking a look at the politics of this. Because while it seems plausible that both Keir Starmer and Gordon Brown genuinely think that this new assembly will be better than the Lords as it currently stands, it's also true that the release of this report, and especially its timing, is intended to do political damage to the Conservatives. For the reasons mentioned earlier, the House of Lords is an uncomfortable topic for the Tories, and it hit the headlines yet again this week after The Guardian revealed that Conservative life peer Michelle Moan and her children allegedly pocketed £29 million in profits from a PPE company which was awarded a government contract during the pandemic. On top of that, it's going to become an even more touchy subject for the Tories when Liz Truss announces her resignation honours list, which is due sometime in December. Politically, it's also a good way for Starmer to portray Labour as radical without risking their newfound reputation for economic competence. As you might have noticed, the government's finances are in a tight spot at the moment, which means that Starmer can't really come out with any popular but expensive policies, like new money for the NHS or a Green New Deal. But House of Lords reform costs nothing and allows Starmer to differentiate Labour from the Conservatives, and it's also really popular. 
71% of Brits favour reforming the Lords, while just 12% want to keep it in its current form, with the Lords being the least trusted political institution in the UK as a whole. Nonetheless, even if it is good politics, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's a good idea. The Lords is actually pretty good at scrutinising legislation, and the depth of expertise in the chamber means that the Lords' committee work is usually a very high quality. It's also worth saying that reforming the Lords will take up a lot of political time and capital, and there's an argument that Labour would be better off focusing on the multitude of crises currently facing the country than trying to get constitutional reform through. Nonetheless, assuming that Starmer could find the time to do it, it's presumably possible to reform the second chamber and keep all of the good bits at the same time, i.e. the effective and expert scrutiny of legislation, while also pushing out all of the bad bits. And as such, an elected second chamber, as Starmer has suggested, might well be an improvement on the current House of Lords model. It would mitigate the Lords' democratic deficits, and if it had an explicitly geographical role, it could make Parliament a little more representative. However, any reform should also ensure that this new second chamber is at least as good at scrutinising legislation as the Lords is. Paradoxically, one of the things that makes the Lords so effective at scrutiny is the fact that they're almost entirely isolated from democratic pressures, which allows them to exercise their expertise and knowledge without having to worry about whether it will actually be popular or not. Another elected chamber therefore runs the risk of essentially becoming a second commons, and therefore slightly redundant. Now, to be clear, we're not saying that a second elected chamber is a bad idea, or that it will necessarily be worse at scrutiny than its predecessor is. Just that when reforming the Lords, a prospective Starmer government should be wary of throwing the baby out with the proverbial bathwater. You get the idea then. Reforming the House of Lords looks like a good idea, but as with any major constitutional reform, the government should be careful in how it goes about it. And only time will tell whether Starmer actually has the political stomach to go through with it, or whether, like his predecessors, constitutional reform will fall to the wayside if he's able to get into number 10. Now, you probably want me to tell you that Labour and Starmer have a clear idea what they're doing and are making rational decisions here. But unfortunately, that's not always the case when it comes to politics. But it can be in your life if you sign up to Brilliant, the STEM learning platform where you can learn everything from quantum computing or algebra to logical decision making, a skill severely lacking in the world at the moment. Now, their logical thinking course might start simple, but it builds, teaching you logical reasoning skills until you're solving problems that previously seemed impossible. And it's the perfect time of year to invest in yourself too. With us heading into a new year, why not improve yourself and keep traveling on a journey of lifelong learning? And you'll get hooked on that empowering feeling of learning too. Because this isn't just about memorization or lectures. Brilliant teaches you by doing, using active learning techniques to teach you the principles behind otherwise complex subjects and ensuring that you actually understand what's going on. And it's not just traditional STEM topics either. There's some incredibly unique and fun stuff on there too, like courses from YouTubers, such as Kurtzkazat on nearby supernova, supervolcanoes, and the limits of humanity, or the brand new course from our nebula friends at Real Engineering. Anyway, if you want to learn more in a fun way, then you should sign up to Brilliant, and the link in the description will get you 20% off an annual premium subscription, which is not only a great deal, but also supports the channel. So, thank you.